Um, anyway, so the first problem is related to a joint work with uh, Amit Danieli, and it basically investigates the role of margin in non-interactive locally private learning. And uh, don't worry if uh, privacy is not your thing. Actually, the problem has an equivalent formulation in other standard models, so which makes it even uh, more basic in my, um, in my view. So let me first briefly describe what is a local model of differential privacy. This is a model in which each user's, uh, user holds their own uh, data point, and they interact with a server that wants to solve some statistical problem over, this, uh, uh, over these data points. And uh, the users are, are, want their privacy, so uh, the model requires the sort of the transcript of the communication between each user and the server to satisfy differential privacy, which roughly in this case means that they should be using these local randomizer, uh, randomizing algorithms that for any two different values of the user's input will produce uh, output distribution over this transcript that are very close, almost uh, indistinguishable. So this is a very nice and natural model which doesn't require the user to trust the uh, server. One issue with it, uh, this kind of unlimited interaction could be very problematic in practice because it introduces various latencies and complexity to the protocol. So in practice, uh, the, the uh, protocols that are used are actually non-interactive. And in those protocols, the server just sends some uh, queries uh, to the uh, users and they respond once with their answer. And that's the end of the protocol. And this type of non-interactive uh, protocols have been already deployed, deployed by some uh, uh, at la very large scale uh, by some companies. So it is natural to ask what kind of problems can be solved by such protocols uh, with uh, the sort of as a function of the number of sa samples available. And you can ask this question for, for any problem, statistical problem you want to uh, solve. We'll be in this open problem, uh, we'll be asking it uh, about the maybe the most basic problem in learning theory, does there sort of, uh, which is the learning of large margin half spaces or linear separators. So a little more formally, the question or the open problem is, does there exist a non-interactive, like one LDP, a local differentially private algorithm for pack learning of half spaces with margin gamma, say over the unit ball in D dimensions and uh, up to accurate, uh, error alpha that uses a polynomial uh, in the inverse of the margin, in the inverse of the accuracy, in the dimension number of samples. And you can equivalently formulate this problem as uh, the, the, the question of whether this problem can be solved using non-adaptive statistical queries. Or also you can, uh, instead of the constraint of privacy, you can require that each user only uh, sends a small number of bits about the sample. So these, will be, uh, these are all models which are equivalent uh, up to polynomial factors, and our question is only up to polynomials. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of this uh, question and what's known about it. So the first work which started looking at, at the power of non-interactive uh, non protocols is this influential work of Kasiviswanathan uh, et al. And they showed that there exists a learning problem that can be uh, solved efficiently by an interactive protocol, but any non-interactive protocol for the problem will require an exponential number of samples. So it shows that the non-interactive protocols are potentially weaker, but, it is a, but they gave a, a very artificial uh, problem as an example. So it doesn't say much about the, how powerful are these non-interactive pro protocols in practice. So we have addressed this uh, 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 problem with uh, Amit, and we showed basically that Margin is necessary for existent, for uh, having a sufficiently large margin is necessary for uh, existence of uh, an efficient no, uh, non-interactive protocol. Specifically, for any class of functions, you can define margin complexity, which is, measures how well that class can be embedded into uh, linear classif uh, classifiers with margin. So the, mar uh, the margin complexity will be uh, the inverse of the largest achievable uh, margin uh, under this embedding. And we show that for any uh, non-interactive one uh, locally differentially private algorithm that PAC learns this class C, arbitrary class C with uh, error, uh, any non-trivial error will require a number of samples which scales polynomially with this margin complexity. The margin complexity can be exponential for some classes which are learnable. So that's uh, the, uh, the sort of the, the lower bound. So margin is necessary. You cannot uh, hope to avoid it. On the positive side, we have also shown an algorithm which does learn all linear classifiers uh, with sufficiently large margin um, uh, in using polynomial number sample, but this algorithm requires knowing the distribution. So it's not a distribution independent algorithm. You can replace the knowledge of the distribution by uh, access to public unlabeled samples or something else, but we don't have a one, an algorithm which is fully non-interactive and uh, learns um, 
classifiers with large margin. So that's uh, it. Let me know if you have any questions. I don't know any specific result like this. I, uh, I like that. I can imagine that because you can do it for fixed distribution, you can probably do it for some classes as long as you can easily figure out the distribution. Like if you can easily figure, uh, uh, not adaptively figure out the parameters of the distribution, then you can, you'll be able to learn with respect to that class. Okay. Yes, yes, Manfred. What margin are you working with? Two norm margin. Two norm margin. Okay, let's thank uh, Vitaly again, and um, uh, next up we have uh, Vitaly Feldman. Thanks. Okay, uh, as promised. So this open problem uh, will look very familiar. It has been just, uh, it's based on a joint work with Roy Frosting and Moritz Hardin. This is exactly uh, the problem that uh, uh, Moritz talked about at the end of the, uh, his talk, and, but let me very briefly recap what's going on. So we're trying to understand overfitting uh, uh, to the test set in multi-class prediction problems. Uh, more formally, we're, look, we're looking at a setting in which uh, uh, users are evaluating the accuracy of their uh, models on some test set on, or, or benchmark. And we know that if you use the, this uh, test set for the first time, you'll get a, an unbiased estimate of its uh, true uh, accuracy on the population. But these test sets are re reused, and moreover, this reuse is adaptive, which means that we get to change our training algorithms and, and come up with new models after observing the scores of the previous ones. And such adaptive reuse is known to be kind of uh, uh, very uh, relatively problematic, so, uh, since it can uh, create overfitting relatively quickly. So uh, more formally, uh, we're interested in understanding the bias, which is the kind of the largest divergence between the um, uh, true uh, kind of uh, uh, accuracy of the model and its uh, accuracy on the test set uh, as a function of the number of accuracy uh, questions that have been made so far. And in the, for the case of binary uh, prediction problems, we do understand the, uh, this bias relatively well. We know that uh, no algorithm can, in the worst case, achieve a larger bias than uh, roughly on the order of square root of k over n, where k is the number of measurements in n is the, num is the number of data points in the test, test set. And we also know that there exist algorithms that achieve this uh, kind of bias. At the same time, there has been some recent meta studies which show that things may be not so bad in, in reality. So it's natural to try to understand whether there are some factors which kind of mitigate this uh, overfitting. So in this work uh, that I've mentioned, uh, we have identified uh, the number of classes as one of those uh, factors that might uh, mitigate overfitting. Specifically, we show that sort of with the uh, uniform prior over all the classes, sort of the very worst case uh, situation, the largest bias an algorithm can achieve using k accuracy measurements is square root of uh, k over n m, where m is the number of classes. So as you can see, it becomes smaller as the number of classes grows. So one natural question is whether there exist algorithms that achieve such bias, and we do give a, a specific attack on a test set which in this, under the same conditions achieve a bias or, or achieves a bias of square root of k over n m squared. And uh, it's a very natural kind of overfitting attack, which basically some kind of boosting or bagging technique, so it's not even uh, that weird. And it can also incorporate the prior information if, if, if prior is available. So the open problem is basically closing uh, this um, gap. As you can see, there is a, a gap between m, m, uh, and m squared. So another way to think about this gap is, the, uh, is uh, let's say we want to achieve a fixed level of a bias. How uh, much uh, should the number of queries grow as the number of um, uh, classes grows? So if, uh, and the question is whether this grow is linear or quadratic. So we at least plotted it for our uh, attack, which is kind of uh, relatively strong. And we plotted it on log log scale to see kind of what is the power of the relationship. And uh, sort of in our example, the. Uh, the growth is roughly uh, between 1.2 and 1.3, so it's worse than linear, but not quite quadratic. I sort of believe that it's likely quadratic, at least for this attack, but there might be better attacks, uh, so it would be nice to find such attacks. Uh, one way to solve this problem 
Uh, another way to solve the problem would be to imp uh, improve our uh, upper bound uh, on the achievable, uh, achievable bias. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. is the one which kind of proves the lower bound of the worst case achievable uh, part. Are you interested in attacks or? No, I'm talking about the other one. So the other one is actually just kind of information theoretic argument yeah. so about sort of how many bits you will learn by observing this accuracy and how far can this information that you have learned will allow you to. In, in the end, you need to kind of create a, a, a model with, uh, which deviates a lot from the sort of the, from its true expected risk. And, and the question is how many bits you need to learn be able to devi deviate a lot from from the expectation, and it's just basically just some kind of very simple information theoretic argument. You know, how far can you get given a certain number of bits? Okay, let's thank Vitaly again. <laughs>